Hello everyone, it is me, David, we're here with Smart Fitness, and the local recording studio, aka the Soundproof Music Room. Now today we're going to talk about a very touching topic. This one is none other than the psychological effects that I have felt during my times with Crohn's disease. Now, I've got my laptop with me again on the side to just kind of bring to light um, not so much facts, but rather helping me recall better and better articulate what I felt. So, first and foremost, what I want to talk about here is the psychological effects that I have felt, as well as what I have seen with people that I've tried to help along the way, as well as what I suggest people can do. This is my opinion. This is not based on psychological or scientific evidence from psychological journals or anything, but obviously there is merit in what I'm about to say, as you guys will soon see. So, just to give you guys a backstory for people who do not know who I am, um, I was first diagnosed in high school around grade 11, the summer of grade 11 going into grade 12 and during that time I didn't really talk to too many people about what was going on. I tried to keep myself pretty quiet about it. Um, it was pretty difficult for me to showcase anything about my lifestyle so I went to school for about 42 days out of the entire year and during that time I lost a progressive amount of weight. It just kept getting worse and worse and worse to a point that I went from about 150 50, 160 pounds down to about 90, between high 80s, low 90s. Um, so I used to obviously cover myself up with lots of layers of clothing to kind of hide everything, which is kind of a shitty top thing because looking back on it, I would have liked to document where I am then and where I am now, and it helped me put into perspective how far I've actually come. My friends tell me on a regular basis how I've come a long way, um, but obviously from my own perspective, it would be a little bit easier if I had documented stuff. So obviously based on my other sites if you go to my Instagram account or my other YouTube posts you'll see that I am not as shy about talking about Crohn's disease or about my body. So clearly I've come a long way but I've worked at it quite hard in terms of not having alcohol or cycling my carbohydrate production so I'm not having constantly high carb days or constantly low carb days because I find that that does help quite a bit. So if you are struggling with Crohn's disease look into your diet and nutrition before you just accept what your GI doctor or medical practice tells you to do. So with the disease, there definitely is an internal mechanism of stress just because of a lack of understanding and awareness of how to deal with disease, uh, as well as a general fear of not being perceived as normal. So for myself, I can say that I definitely felt this way and still to a certain degree feel this way, where even when I go out in public, I, the first thing I do is I look for a bathroom. If I go to a friend's house, the very first thing I do if I've never been there before is say, where's the bathroom, regardless of if I have to or not, just to be 100% certain that I know where it is if I need to go. 95% of the time I don't need to, but it's just kind of like an innate thing that's become ingrained with me because of how it was back in high school and grade 12. Um, again, you know, it, it's a pretty shitty topic, but no pun intended, but there was quite a bit of social stigma as well related to it. I remember people used to say behind my back how the acne that I had on my face, which was due to some of the medicine I was taking at that time, uh, created craters and pock marks in my face and how I looked like uh, I was actually a diseased kid from a concentration camp. That was probably the best one to hear. But I mean, it's high school, so I've kind of just kind of gotten over it. But you know, it, it does suck. So the simple fact that people with IBD are different than those who do not have IBD or even people with IBS, um, it, it's something that you just need to accept. And continue to go on with your life otherwise it'll have a mental and physical effect on you from a psychological and a GI perspective as a, the course of the disease does play a role on your stress. Um, a, a lot of my situations that created stress did stem from high school obviously so removing that stimulus helped by not being there as much I did not feel as much stress and I did slowly start to get better. But it wasn't until probably my second or third year of university that I truly started to feel that I was quote unquote normal. Um, but the thing that you really need to do is recognize that it's just going to be with you for your entire life. You can either accept it and make it part of you or just leave it as is. So what can you do based on your own problems to improve your social situations? from my perspective. So the first thing is, is obviously as I've kind of alluded to, recognize that you're different and accept it. Not in this like hippy dippy bullshit, 
stupid type of way, as in like we're all different. Let's sit down by fire and sing kumbaya. But like recognize that at an organic, biological, and even a physical, psychological level, you're going to be different from the average population. Accept that as it is and don't be ashamed of it. Recognize that going to the bathroom or passing gas a lot is just part of who you are. But at the same time, recognize that if you're going to the bathroom more than usual, chances are you've got something that's going on gastrointestinally wise that is not normal or beyond the scope of your disease. So don't think that you're high and mighty just because you take a shit a lot, but recognize that you might need to be able to know the difference between a flare up and just that's the core to your disease. The second thing is don't give a crap about what other people have to say. And this might come across as harsh, but in my experience, a lot of the people that have tried to help me don't really know what they're talking about. They kind of just spit random crap out of their butt. Again, no pun intended, but they don't really know what they're talking about. They just kind of say stuff and then just assume that they're helping. So for example, I've had family members where we've had a gathering say, oh, this is quinoa or it's quinoa flour, so you should be able to eat it. Or, oh, this is gluten free after, I don't even know where the hell they get this from, assuming that I'm gluten free, but or they'll make remarks along the lines of how it's dairy free, even though I am not dairy free. I haven't ever been really dairy free per se, beyond my own personal choice, not really related to the disease. And then there's even been times where they've told me that I can just kind of have a mindset adjustment and I'll be fine. So that was probably the, the best one. But at the same time, recognize that you don't need to be a dick about it. So I used to get pretty agitated when I would have family or, or even some friends that I don't really associate with, try to tell me how I can improve myself when they haven't even done any research or readings or anything like that. So just kind of accept it as is, roll it off your shoulders, recognize that you're going to have people like that and just move on with it. But if there is somebody who has genuinely tried to help you and has suggested something that they have seen to help, then obviously there is merit to their help and take it in for what it is. You don't have to be a dick about it regardless, just recognize that there is going to be people that have no idea what they're saying and think that they're doing more they're, they're trying to help you but chances are they're going to do more harm than good so you need to be able to differentiate between that and finally the last and probably the most important thing is is don't stay silent have somebody to talk to um i found that during the first year year and a half of my time with the disease per se i tried to stay silent and it didn't really work so there was times where I used to say to my parents, oh, I don't even care, let's just stop doing tests and eventually I'll get better and chances are that did that wouldn't have happened or um, if I just ignore it, it'll go away or if I just ignore people and don't tell them how I'm feeling, then I'll feel better and obviously that made me feel worse, otherwise I wouldn't have been making a video like this detailing how to get over and overcome those problems. So you need to find yourself an outlet of somebody you can talk to. Currently I've got my girlfriend, obviously, you guys know Carly, and then there's Luke, the guy who's hands down filming this right now. So Luke, if you want to say a little hello. Hello to everybody. Um, <laughs> but having an outlet of somebody to talk to helps tremendously. It helps with coping for sure. It doesn't even have to be somebody in person, but if you have some sort of aspect of somebody that you can reach out to and talk to, even places like Crohn's and Colitis forums or even Reddit, places like that where people are genuinely trying to help you based on scientific information or their own anecdotal information, it goes a long way. Having somebody to discuss what you're talking about with and who actually is there to actually care, it, it helps a lot. I remember back in probably my returning year of grade 12 when I was just getting over the initial, I guess you could call it symptoms or characteristics of the disease that I couldn't really control. Luke used to come over on probably a weekly basis, maybe two or three times a week. And half the time he wouldn't even say anything. We would just sit there and play video games or watch TV. He wouldn't even ask me how I was feeling beyond how are you doing today. And if I told him, I told him. Otherwise, he didn't really pry for answers. And like that goes a long way. Having somebody that just is there and talks and is socially supportive but knows when to kind of shut up and just treat you like a normal human, it, it goes a long way. So if you can find yourself somebody who will be there and will talk to you and does have an interest, not just for their own, like, personal benefit like making themselves feel better but rather to help you feel better it goes a hell of a long way so in closing what i can say is don't stay silent speak out it goes a long way 
like I've kind of hammered that one home. Even if you want to talk to somebody like me, I'm available here through social media. I can talk to you as well. Don't give a crap about what most people have to say because chances are they're going to give you misinformation or something that's going to make you worse. If they actually know what they're talking about and it is under some sort of merit or scientific rigor or even actual validated or substantiated advice, then sure, take it into consideration. And the last thing is accept the disease as it is because if you don't accept the disease, you won't accept yourself. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's all I have to say about this one. I hope you found it informative. Stay strong.